Hello everybody, today I'd like to announce my second build that I will do in parallel with Case Labs S3 custom painted case which was completed by Hanover and you will see the final video paint job just in a few days. The build that I'm talking about, this will be based on my silent sniper build that was my main rig at home for a couple years but now it's a little bit dated so I'd like to rebuild it and this all possible with the help of a few sponsors we have a gigabyte who sponsored us for both builds actually both case labs mercury with this uh, micro itx box and also we have this oc4 the top of the line gigabyte board that will go into our tech station so this will help us to do a lot of tests and have a good overclocking capacity and everything and uh, two other sponsors is ak and the aqua computer who provided blocks and test and measurement equipment so we have a lot of good stuff coming into this build and um, will be interesting to watch and will be interesting to build what i would like to talk today is to have a look quick look on this gigabyte oc force board and we'll have a quick talk about it in terms of uh, modding and water cooling this board already was covered in a great depth by few reviewers i saw a not bad review by new egg linus did a good work on this board as well so in terms of all components and um, everything that comes with this board this was already covered so i don't think that you guys will be want to hear it yet another time that this is this and this and that so i'd like to look at at the board in terms of the modding and tell you why I actually I was looking for this board specifically and approach Gigabyte and ask them if they're willing to sponsor it and Gigabyte USA was nice enough to say okay we'll help you out so the sold me board so let's have a look on this one and I'll tell you a couple thoughts that I'm personally have about it here we have a fresh out of the box top of the line Gigabyte motherboard packed with tons of features a lot of accessories supplied with this board but also it costs quite a bit of money so it's up to you to decide if it works for you personally to buy it or not we're not going to discuss that in this video i'm telling you why i personally selected this board for myself first of all speaking about this orange oc family of motherboards i had a really good experience with this board before the previous generation x58 which was part of our orange build that we built together with bill owen based on corsair d700 700d case so it was excellent board works really well and i really like it so that's why i also when i started looking for new motherboard i kind of looked what's fresh and new coming with this particular family of motherboards so this is once generation over what i have right now first thing that i really noticed is that um, that all materialization is happening with electronics so all components it shrinks quite a bit from my x58 mobile i have it's we're talking about everything from capacitors to actually OC buttons um, and everything much more smaller, more neat and look more high tech, so to speak. Uh, so it's, it's, I really like the looks of the motherboard. Heat sinks also beautifully done, uh, orange color. You can't really see on the cam the difference between um, those orange slots and this orange. This is much more nice looking. Also because it's actually anodized aluminum and this is plastic, but nevertheless, the color is really fantastic. Um, I really like how it looks and it will be a shame to remove those heat sinks and why I tell you in a second. So uh, the look of the motherboard together is, is really, really interesting. So it's a nice choice for somebody who is building like modding computer wants to look at cool. And uh, so it's uh, black and orange is uh, one of the interesting combinations so to speak. So another thing that brought my attention and why I specifically asked for this motherboard from Gigabyte is this hybrid cooling solution we have here. So you can see, so we have like two heat sinks with fans, active heat sinks, but also this part top heat sinks it also can be water cooled so if you if i show you here so you have one and two barbs uh three eighths or ten millimeter version of it and we can also attach water cooling system and have a dual cooling capacity so it will be fans and cooling one thing that i'm not 100 percent sure is that if i cool this board with water can i shut down this fan completely because um they look like water only goes through this heat sinks and there's a little connection here but i don't think it will work good enough to justify switching off this fan if you want it 
kind of silent on something. But I also assume that because it's power management and it will be sense how uh, cool or, or cold your chip is, so probably wouldn't be spin too much. Anyways, so any, so what I would like to do with this board, I would like to, to assemble the system and test the cooling performance of the motherboard for this hybrid system. So we'll attach the water to it and do some, some running. Then I would like to use a block sponsored by EK Water Blocks, and I have it right here. So we have this EK block and uh, we're going to rip this beautiful heatsink by Gigabyte and put EK block instead. So what I'm trying to see for myself, if the custom water cooling solution will yield any tangible benefits. Because basically, I want to think that when you put a custom solution, everything gets much better and much cool and blah, 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 right? But I really want to see on practice. So will I get any benefit in terms of the performance or lower temperatures if I take stock heat sinks from Gigabyte and I replace it with um, EK water blocks? Of course, we're assuming that um, the installation of heat sinks is done properly, not like on my MSI board that we have on the Venom build when heatsink didn't even touch anything so obviously wouldn't do anything but uh, so if, if if everything connected properly and it should cool uh, properly the board itself so it will be interesting to see if there's any difference because if there are no then it became only question of water cooling hobby just you know work a little bit on the project remove thing put new thing on and have slightly different looks um, and uh, that's only a reason to do so but if there is actually a benefit in the cooling performance then it's also give additional compelling reason to do so because this is a question of your time and your money because you spend 100 bucks and full day of work to modify this board right so the question is, is it worth it so we'll check it out one of the first tests on the new bench another thing that um, i would like to note that this board is went really overboard with number of fan headers we have nine fan headers on total on this board so basically if you don't use some uber very powerful fans that you actually can connect um, nine fans to all your radiators and stuff it will be maybe a little bit messy in terms of uh, wiring because a lot of wires coming out of the motherboard but if you don't want to use the fan controller this board will allow you to do so because it's enough connection here also, most of the connection goes along the uh, lower edge of the motherboard, so it helps a little bit with uh, wire management. The rest is here, here, here. Um, that obviously will be more visible when we when we wire it up. So overall, this is a pretty cool product. I like it. I would like to start build as soon as possible and we'll see what kind of results we'll get. Again, thank you Gabby to provide this. We will see this board a lot in the coming months with a different variety of testing we're going through. So it uh, will be interesting to see it in action rather than talk theoretically about all bell and whistles that you can read off the data sheet. Thank you very much for watching our channel. Thank you for subscribing and see you soon with more videos.